Hi there. I've been thinking about a while just doing a sort of diary of an investor, and I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, just off the cuff stuff, and uh, just thoughts on the market essentially. Uh, talking about stocks, talking about uh, strategy, and uh, today been a you know big sell off in the markets. I think the S and P has been down for like six days in a trot this uh, in American stock markets, and it's one of the worst days for like six uh, six seven months. And so it's a big sell-off happened today. And these sell-offs, you know, can, can affect you psychologically. It's why it's always good to have a strategy, I think, um, to fall back on. And even then, you know, it can spook you. You can think, wow, is this going to be a bear market? Um, and it's counterintuitive to buy on days like this. But you normally find it's a correction. And uh, having, you know, uh, almost the, the, the gore and the guts to buy on days like this sometimes works out very well, you know, because you think... Uh, the stock market's going to the, it's going to hell in a high cart, in a hand cart, whatever the cart it is. But um, it often can pay out well for you because if you if you if you invest like you know there's a bear market around the corner or a recession, number one you probably won't invest anyway. But number two, if you do invest, it's got to be a very compelling story. The stock you're investing into, um, it's got to be very undervalued, and you think well, whatever happens, it can't go a lot lower. So always to have that in your back of your mind is not a bad thing, you know. To always think. There could be a recession around the corner. That's not a bad thing. And also, a recession isn't a bad thing. You know, it's it's um, it it throws up some cracking opportunities. Uh, you, you find that a bounce when a, when a, when a, when a stock market has a recession or a bear market, it lasts for about uh, two years or a year to two years. That's not to say everything goes down. Of course, there are opportunities, especially in the smaller cap space, where uh, they're driven by news. You can still make money in a bear market. Um, but coming out of a bear market, fantastic opportunity. That's why it's always good to have some cash. And I'd say uh, up until last week, I was about forty percent in cash because I did sort of see. And I've been mean, talking about this on the weekend podcast. I did sort of see this coming, you know. And I said, "Listen, we got uh, it's a lot of headwinds, you know, facing us at the moment. There's there's Brexit, there's uh, there's Trump and the trade tariffs, and that's an, an, a no win game, you know." Uh, you know, Trump or America think they're winning, but China is the second biggest economy in the world, and their economy is, is taking a battering. Their stock market is taking a battering, and when that happens, you know, it has repercussions across uh, across the globe. And resource stocks. I mean, where do you think uh, a, a lot of the commodities are going that are dug up at the moment? Most of them, lithium, you know, copper, all this are going to China. So if China takes a knock. You know, a lot of these resource stocks in this small cap space will take a knock too. So I think sooner or later a deal will come to pass there. I think a deal will happen there with uh, Trump and, uh, and President Xi Jinping. Um, apparently they're meeting at the G20 in November. So hopefully uh, it'll be the start of a deal because it's not good for anyone. It's, you know, it's, uh, they've both got a win out of this for the entire planet to win. If one of them loses... Either one, uh, the global economy will suffer, full stop. And then we've got Brexit, of course. And of course, uh, again, it's the same thing. A deal is good for both sides. Uh, and no deal is not good for any side, particularly. So I, I see it getting done. So what I see happening here is a massive rally off the back of these two deals. I think these deals will get it done because at the end of the day, it's better uh, globally. Um, but I think we'll have a massive rally. But I do think we will be going into recession in the next... Um, year or 18 months because uh, interest rates are going up and uh, it is having slowly having an effect uh, I mean I, this is what you saw today in the correction of the markets I think it's I mean it, it, Trump was screaming saying the Fed is loco which doesn't help but they're not acting sensibly because um, you know that's the trouble <laughs> everything Trump has done every policy he's done is pushing prices up in America that's what it's doing you know and yet the Fed is sort of reading in this uh, inflationary sort of uh, stimulus and he's calling them crazy. <laughs> they're, they're, they're acting very measured and sensibly. Um, as far as my trading is concerned, yesterday I bought some more C4XD, which I quite like. I've written a blog about it. It's a highly disruptive biotech company, bigger market cap than I normally buy. And uh, it's worth looking at this company because most biotech companies have, say, one drug, maybe two drugs, a lead drug and one behind in the pipeline. Uh, these intend to have about 40 on the go. And it's like, it's a 40 million market cap, but um, I still, and, and, and Clive Dix, the CEO, uh, phenomenal track record, has skinned the game. So it's worth looking at C4XD. Another company I bought, and uh, it's 
I know some people say, why did you buy that? Or it's a rubbish stock. But I bought Tuple. Um, it's worth, and I think it's worth looking at Tuple because they are a 2.5 million market cap company. They just raised 2.2 million. So let's say they've got 2 million there. Um, and I don't know if you saw the trading update recently about Tuple. They they said they've done, a, um, they did, they've done 300 new business customers or 302 in August, which is a quiet month. They've done 320 in September. In the first week of October, they've done 110 new customers. And they're that fundraise, which was massive. It was like, you know, as big as their market cap or bigger. Obviously, took the market. There's a lot of churn there happening. But they're convinced that that will take them through to cash flow positive. So I quite like the fact they've got their own IP million software. It's a voice over um, VOIP, voice over internet protocol, I think it's called. But um, it's cloud-based. And so to scale it up, it doesn't cost them anything. They can get 20 times as big. It doesn't cost them a lot. They wouldn't have to hire any more staff. Uh, it's pretty much automated. So I, I quite like that. So I bought some tuple. And today, um, one is starting to get a bit scary. I'm on about 10% of my portfolio of this. And it's Jangada Mines. I like it, though. It's, 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 they've got everything there. They've got all the commodities. You know, pretty much, <laughs> you, you name it, they've got it. They've got cobalt, copper, uh, nickel, palladium, platinum, uh, gold. And uh, they've got an NPV of 192 million. Uh, an IRR of 67% and uh, a payback of 1.6 years. It's a very efficient, low-cost project, and that's what you need, even, even in a downturn. You know, if they, I mean, they've got several um, milestones coming up as well. They've just had a, a sort of uh, environmental license pass. They're going for a trial, mine, a trial mining permit very soon. They're also going for uh, a maiden joke resource just on the copper cobalt. Um, so there's a lot happening before the end of the year. Uh, they've just raised cash. It wasn't the most spectacular fundraise ever. They, they messed up, you know, they held off too long. But again, in the long term, you look at this as a, a sub-6 million market cap with an NPV of 192 million. Not only that, they've got three mining licenses, 44 exploration licenses. This is a project that's been uh, Anglo-American spent uh, $35 million on. Uh, it was, wasn't big enough for them, but of course it's massive for um, Jangada. And all, at the time, the metals prices wasn't very good either when Jang, when when um, Anglo sold it. So some people often say, why do big companies sell these uh, assets if they're any good? Because you know a massive company like Anglo, it, it wouldn't move the needle. And at the time, um, there was a refocus on core commodities, and the commodities they look at there wasn't wasn't for them, and uh, it wasn't a big enough project as well. Um, so it wasn't a core project, but I think for Jan Garnick, of course, it'd be transformational. And at six million market cap with cash at the moment, I just think it's, uh, it's of course, I mean, it doesn't seem like low risk. When I was buying a day, it didn't feel like low risk. I bought a chunk of shares again, just average down. I'm about 30% down on this company at the moment. Um, but it didn't feel like low risk. But long term, in the moment, when we're having a bear market, it feels quite, uh, you know, seat of the pants stuff. But longer term, which, of course, I'm going to hold it for, then uh, we'll forget. I mean, do you know what? You forget about these bumps in the road. These are, this is a little correction, a bump, you know? I mean, going back in February, I was watching a guy on CNBC today, and he said the VIX, which is a, a, a measure of volatility, was at 22 today, which and it's been quite flat. It's been down below 10 the last few sort of uh, weeks. And he said, well, this is nothing. He said, back in February, the VIX hit 50. And I can't even remember the volatility in February. So it just goes to show that at the time, it seems like a big deal. But then a couple of months down the line, I, I, you know, you forget all about it. You think, wow, I should have bought more. I should have bought more that time. And remember, if we, even if we are, I, I do believe we're going into a uh, bear market. I don't know when. It's hard to time these things. But I think, you know, uh, next sort of year, next six, year, six months to a year, maybe 18 months. But remember, even when we go into bear markets, you get very violent rallies in a bear market. So there's plenty of time to sell. And I always say, you know, buy on a down day, sell on an up day. And someone was sort of having a discussion with me on Twitter, saying um, jumping into the market like this is where you lose money. I, I, I disagreed. I said, no, no, it's not. Most new investors lose money because they, they buy on up days, sell on down days. You've got to flip that mentality. Like I said before, in the shops, when there's a sale on, people rush in and buy stuff. In the stock market, when there's a sale on, people run the other way. You shouldn't be doing that. If you look at a company, you know, not just buying willy-nilly. I mean, look at stocks you've researched, you're comfortable with, and you think are cheap, and undervalued, you know, for the mid to long term, undervalued. If you think they are, and you're not overexposing yourself, then top up. You know, that's what I think. And uh, that's what we do. It's like, oh, I'll finish on Warren Buffett, you know. 
he's the kind of guy that would enjoy days to day because he knows most people can't buy it on days to day. They, they haven't got that you know, almost counterintuitive feel. It feels uncomfortable to buy on a down day, doesn't it? But that's when you should be buying most of the time because you find blips like this, really nasty sell offs like this don't happen. It obviously whips all back up within a couple of days, you know? Uh, it's, a, it's a steady grind down. That's the scary thing. So what you need to do is buy on days of this, sell. I mean, a couple of weeks back when I was selling, my portfolio was at an all-time high, and I was doing the right thing. I was selling it at an all-time high, you know. But my thought was at the time, I don't want to be selling here. I wonder if I can earn more money. And and, uh, and now, even though it's got 40% in cash until a week ago or so, I think now I should have sort of sold even more. So... Um, you know, it's just, it's just a way we've got to, got to get heads into this counterintuitive thinking that down days are buy days, up days are sell days, pretty much, you know. That's the way it works. So like I said, it's day one of a diary. I don't know if I'll do it regularly, but um, if you find it useful, by all means, uh, stick your thumbs up. Um, you know, let me know in the comments below, and maybe I'll keep doing it. I'll, I'll do it day to day. I thought today, maybe this is quite long as to start off, but I thought today, and uh, by all means, share, subscribe, and, uh, you know, I'll keep doing it. All right. Thanks for watching.